We are delighted to welcome you this morning. Uh, we are uh, definitely uh, having an opportunity to practice all kinds of techniques and, and flexibility and innovation and patience. Um, and even with the unpredictability of the weather, we still have a wonderful gathering of incredible thinkers and doers in this room. And we know that we're going to have a delightful experience over the next two days. So thank you for everything that you did to get from wherever you were 24 hours ago <laughs> into this room today, um, which we know involved planes, trains, automobiles, you know, uh, buses, taxis, for canceled shuttles, all of that. Thank you. So we're going to start with our formal welcome. We do have a couple of uh, modifications in the program today, and I'll share that with you so you have a sense of what our agenda will be. Um, but first, Robin and David will offer some opening words. Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> so it is really um, a pleasure for me yet again to be standing here uh, in front of this gathering of people for uh, the Gender and Work Research Symposium. Um, and uh, and I, I really wanted Laura to do the initial hello, because really, although um, David's and my names are uh, always tacked on to the, um, uh, the people who have organized this, really, uh, we've been very much in a support, I hope have been supportive, but Laura has really, um, taken the reins and, and, and really taken care of everything. And part of that is because I've been on sabbatical this year. Um, so I wanted to say a little bit about um, uh, the history of this gathering. Um, some of you have been to uh, every one of the uh, symposia that we've had um, starting in 2013. The, um, the idea was very similar actually to this year we, um, we, we, we had this research symposium to be part of the celebration of 50 years since the admission of women to the two-year MBA program at HBS. And some of you may remember that. And we referred to that whole year of activities as the W50. And so this was before we had a gender initiative. Um, but I was in a role where the dean had asked me to, um, to head up those, uh, uh, those activities together with um, two other colleagues, Boris Groisberg and Cynthia Montgomery. Um, and so one of the things that we decided to do was to have this research symposium, a, a space that was really for scholars um, to share knowledge, but with also space for practitioners. And so we've always had, um, we've tried to get about 100, 120 people in the room with about 20 to 25% um, practitioners, which seems like a really good, you know, thoughtful practitioners, people who really want to learn from scholars and scholars who really want to learn from practitioners. So that's been a, a theme that I think um, carries through as well uh, to this year. So that first year, um, it was kind of just greatest hits. We, Amy Cuddy and I got together and it was like, who is doing interesting research on race and gender, and who's a good speaker. <laughs> so we had a really um, very uh, wonderful event. Uh, and then we started the Gender Initiative shortly after that. So we said, okay, let's just make this an annual thing and we'll put it under the, um, uh, you know, the auspices of the Gender Initiative. So I wanna just um, uh, name, give you some of the titles of the past events and um, to kind of give a, um, a bit of a frame around what we're doing here today. So. And I have to say, over the years, I love to hear that people uh, refer to this conference as an edgy one. <laughs> so I think that's just a great adjective. I love it. Uh, and I think we are definitely continuing in that vein uh, as I look at what the agenda is for, um, for our time together today. So um, after Greatest Hits, we had in, in 2014, we had Relationships Among Women, Bridging Racial, Generational, and Global Divides. Um, 2015 was Research to Change the World, Translating Ideas, Transforming Practice. 2016 was Talking the Walk, Possibilities for Change Through Dialogue, Expression, and Narrative. And last year was Identities, Images, and the Spaces in Between. 
So this year is Race, Work, and Leadership, Learning About and From uh, Black Leaders, Black Leadership, I think. So, um, I, so I, I, the theme all the way across is always about the connection between research and practice. So hoping very much to continue uh, in that vein. And we've always taken an intersectional approach in the gender initiative. So we call it the gender initiative. And when I first raised this idea um, to the dean, one question was, well, are we gonna then have to have a race initiative? And then what about an initiative for, you know, for LGBT? And you know, I said, no, this is the gender initiative. It's where I think the energy uh, in the world is right now. And this was a few years ago. Um, I think that people will recognize why we would have a gender initiative. And gender is just a portal into all of the axes of inequality that um, on their own and in interaction with each other and with gender really shape the lives and livelihoods and of people and also our workplaces. And so um, it's really you know, in that spirit that I, I very much wanted to um, invite the, um, uh, the coordinators, the, the, the people in charge of the ASU 50 uh, festivities, which has been located in what we call the leadership initiative. So that's another initiative at the school <coughs> that Tony Mayo, who will be speaking a little bit later, is um, co-runs along with uh, Linda Hill. Um, and, um, and so I said, you know, let's, let's take the, uh, you know, the, um, the infrastructure we already have in the gender initiative and turn the topic over to the uh, celebration and the commemoration of 50 years since the start of the African American Student Union. We actually think, I think we don't know, or do we now know when the first black student? 1915, okay, interesting. Um, and also, it, it, it's also interesting that when we were looking at the W50, there was, a, there was a, a program that was run over at Radcliffe before there was actually um, women in the two-year MBA program here. And it was a certificate program for women and faculty here, good-hearted faculty would go over across the river and teach those um, women at Radcliffe. And we know that there were some black women who graduated from that program. So, um, so I think we've, we've had uh, you know, African-Americans in our midst for a very long time. Uh, and I'm, I'm just really thrilled that we are here to, um, to really delve into that experience and see what we can all um, learn from it. So I'm gonna turn over to David and- um, You told my part. I did? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what, what else is new? What else is new? Um, first of all, uh, it's great to uh, great to be here. Um, as uh, as some of you know, uh, I recently took the position to be the president of Morehouse College. Uh, so it feels like uh, you know I'm throwing a party for myself today. <laughs> <laughs> Only from the. Uh, from the, from the vantage point uh, that when I think about how few people we could have gotten in this room 30, almost 30 years ago when I joined the faculty of the Harvard Business School and to see the great work that's represented by all of the people here, uh, both in practice as well as uh, uh, in research is just kind of uh, overwhelming. Um, what I was supposed to do was to make the connection that Robin made about <laughs> um, the way this came about. And it came about because about two years ago, a group of people here at the Harvard Business School started to have a conversation about how do we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the, African -Ameri the formation of the African American Student Union. And there's a conference that ha has happened here for I don't know how many years uh, that's now named after H. Naylor Fitzhugh, uh, who was one of the most well-known African-American graduates uh, of the Harvard Business School. And that conference is mostly for our alumni, prospective students, 
And we started to talk about how to celebrate that. And out of that came a discussion about, well, what about research? Uh, and because of the work that Robin had been doing here with the Gender Initiative, which as she described, has always been about intersectionality, it was kind of a question of figure and ground. So let's have a research conference uh, or symposium that makes race, and in particular the black experience, figure rather than ground. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I would, uh, that I'm aware of uh, because of my new role is um, how this year really marks a historical moment. Uh, it's the 50th anniversary of the African American Student Union. It's also the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King. Uh, so if you imagine what the world was like 50 years ago, the cauldron or crucible of change that it was, uh, that's what we are sort of, in my view, um, we're, we're part of that lineage in this very moment. We're marking a historical moment. And um, just like back then, those, um, I, think in, I think when they formed, Tony's our resident historian on this, there were five African Americans on campus at the time? There, there were six, but what? Okay, so there were six African Americans, or at least, Six, six known or self-identified African-Americans on this campus 50 years ago as MBA students. Uh, they couldn't imagine what would follow, that we'd be here today uh, in the same way that my guess is many of us couldn't imagine the world that would follow Dr. King, uh, both in terms of its progress as well as how much more work there is to do. Uh, so for me, uh, that's what we're marking with my party that you guys are having for me. Okay. <laughs> so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Laura, uh, who will kick us off. Thank you.